Wonderful performance, and that concert came to us from Spivey Hall in Morrow, Georgia, just south of Atlanta. I'm Fred Child. This is Performance Today from APM, American Public Media. Well, that felt pretty good to me. What do you think, Craig? Sounded great, Fred. That's a wrap. All right. Excellent. Say, Fred, have you ever been to Spivey Hall? As a matter of fact, Craig, Spivey Hall, as I said, is in Morrow, Georgia, about 15 miles south of Atlanta. When I went to Spivey Hall to hear a concert, I had a chance to walk around the neighborhood at sunset, just as night was falling. There was an old dilapidated house, clearly used to be a grand mansion back in the Civil War days. Now though, completely fallen down. Spanish moss overtaking the upstairs balcony. Windows gaping like open mouths. A rocking chair still on the front porch, still rocking back and forth in the wind. A rusty gate creaking on the hinge. I heard a story about this house. A family from New Jersey saw it, liked it, thought they could rebuild it and move in. That's exactly what they did. On the first night, the kids were sleeping in the upstairs room, those windows open, letting the southern breezes come right through. The moon poured light in through the open windows. The kids were sound asleep when suddenly there were noises from the attic. The two children sat bolt upright in bed, eyes wide open. They came screaming down the stairs. They did not stop until they were out in the front lawn. Their parents came out and said, what's the matter? What's going on? Mommy, Daddy, we heard these horrible noises coming from the attic. Their parents said, oh, silly kids, I'm sure. It was just an old house settling, maybe even a tree branch scraping against the house from the wind. No, Mommy, this was something much more than that. I don't know what this was. It sounded like there was somebody in the attic. Well, the parents told their kids they would check on this again in the morning. It was a beautiful night, warm southern evening. They would all sleep outside on the porch. In the morning, the parents took a look up in the attic. Clearly, no one had been there for decades. There was a layer of dust undisturbed by anything. There was nothing to be seen, nothing to be found. The parents reassured their children there was nothing in the attic, there was nothing to be afraid of. Still, the kids, having heard what they heard, refused to sleep in the upstairs bedroom the next night. So they all camped out in sleeping bags in their parents' room. The second night, the same sounds, this time louder, echoing all the way down to the master bedroom. This time, the entire family sat bolt upright in their sleeping bags. They all ran screaming out of the house into the front yard in fact, they ran all the way across the street to the house next door. They slept on the lawn until dawn. In the morning, they all got together, hugged each other, walked back toward their house, and saw an old woman sitting in the rocking chair on the porch. She said, Y'all made a wise choice getting out of here last night. I would not go back in there if I was you. The family was astonished once again and asked her, why, what went on here? Why should we not go back into our own house? The old woman continued. She said her grandfather had told her a story about this house, had made her promise never to go in there when she was a girl. The story goes back to the summer of 1864 General Sherman had marched through the city of Atlanta, south toward Jonesboro. 
The rail line runs right through Morro, Georgia. General Sherman was marching south. General Hood and the Confederate Army tried to cut him off right in the town of Morro. The Union troops were ruthless, having just burned the city of Atlanta. But one soldier had a reputation as the meanest, the nastiest, the most bloodthirsty of them all. He wore not the usual Union Jack. He wore a beaver skin cap, as if to say he was an aristocrat among his fellow soldiers. He was hated and feared not only by the Confederates, but by his fellow Union troops. He suffered a terrible wound in his right knee. He could no longer walk. He took this wound not from a Confederate bullet. It was a Union bullet that wounded this man. The Union troops feared him more than anybody. They didn't want him among their ranks. They shot him, and as they passed through Morro, Georgia, they stashed this man in the attic of this beautiful house. A fierce battle raged around the train station in Morro, Georgia, not far from the current site of Spivey Hall. The Confederates retreated. The Union soldiers marched further south and burned Morro, just as they had Atlanta. Strangely, there was one house that did not burn to the ground, the house with this soldier with the beaver skin cap and the wounded leg. When the ashes and the embers settled around the town of Morro, the townspeople saw one house standing unscathed. They walked into the house and found no one, not even in the upstairs attic, where, just as there is today, there was a layer of undisturbed dust covering everything and a beaver skin hat hanging in the corner. The old woman finished her story, threw her head back, and laughed. This was a well-educated family of northerners from New Jersey. They thanked her for her story, but said they didn't believe any of this southern gothic nonsense. This was their house. They were going back in. The old woman said, suit yourself, and wandered off into the morning. The family mustered their courage, and later that day, they went upstairs, up the creaky staircase, past the upstairs bedroom, back up to the attic. They opened the attic door, looked around. Once again, a layer of dust covering everything, undisturbed for decades. They walked around the entire attic, found a small door leading to a storage space just above the attic. The mother of the family mustered her courage. As soon as she cracked that door open, a rush of cold air enveloped the family, swirled around them twice, and flew down the stairs. And downstairs the family flew with it, screaming as they went, past the upstairs bedroom, past the downstairs bedroom, all the way down the stairs. The family ran and screamed. They stopped dead in their tracks. The beaver skin hat was hanging at the bottom of the banister, gently swinging in the breeze. The door was locked from the inside. So, yeah, Craig, as a matter of fact, I have been to Spivey Hall, beautiful concert hall there in a beautiful little town in Georgia, just south of Atlanta, Morrow, Georgia.